uh, September of uh, this year. Uh, and uh, the idea of the for the art lectures, uh, Stack IOM art lectures, is to promote and to deliberate on the various aspects of art. Uh, art history, art theory, um, visual arts, sculpture, including architecture, art policy, art advocacy, uh, techniques, uh, various schools of art, art within uh, certain regions. One of the uh, 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 focus uh, of this series is to deliberate and discuss on art in the Malay world. Uh, South Asia, the term uh, Malay world is used. And we have uh, lined up uh, a number of uh, speakers uh, who includes uh, academics, uh, scholars, uh, art administrators, artists, uh, and those who have been around uh, in terms of uh, 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 writing and uh, assessing uh, aspects of uh, architecture uh, in, in Malaysia and other parts of the world. So this uh, series is uh, also to uh, uh, promote ISTEC as a place to deliberate on art and its context. Uh, today we have uh, we have invited uh, uh, a known, uh, renowned uh, uh, academic in art. I was when I was at USM, uh, I was uh, collaborating with Dr. Sarina, uh, and uh, she's been very active uh, in the, the uh, art academic circle. The title of her talk will be "From Early Representations to Contemporary Art Making." Discussions on Selected Artworks by Women Artists from Southeast Asia. Uh, Dr. Sarina is uh, uh, Dean uh, at the University of Science Malaysia School of Arts and uh, holds the position of Associate Professor of Art History. Uh, she received the prestigious London Asia Research Award in 2017 and multiple CAA Getty travel grants from 2016 to 2019. Uh, she authored a number of books. Uh, one is titled Malaysian Art Since the 1990s Postmodern Situation uh, 2018. Was that uh, from the uh, grant that you got on the. Okay, I see. Uh, and then Seni Lukis di Malaysia Sejak Tahun 1990 an Situasi Pasca Modern 2023. While co-educating, uh, co-co-editing uh, ambitious alignments, new histories of South East Asian art, 1945-1990. Uh, Her extensive writings on Malaysian art are featured in renowned academic journals, including Trans South East, South East of Now and uh, Wajana Uh, uh By the way, I'm Murat uh, from Istek. I'm convening this uh, art series. So with that, uh, uh, over to you, Dr. Zaina. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, a very good afternoon uh, to those who are present uh, here in the space, in the nice library space at Nakia Al Atas. And of, of course, I hope there are a few more online. <laughs> uh, but um, I would like to extend my gratitude uh, to, of course, Prof. Datuk Mura American, who invited me to speak about art today at the renowned Institute ISTEC and uh, UIA. Um, as uh, Prof Murad has, you know, kindly introduced me, um, basically I see myself as an art historian, he is specializing especially in the context of Malaysian modern art. Uh, so besides teaching modern Malaysian art, I also took, taught a survey class of modern and contemporary art history, specifically on modern Asian art. 
Uh, but um, as per our topic today, I wouldn't say that I'm the subject expertise of human artists because I have I know that there are a few of my colleagues um, who have you know well written in this area, but not specifically in Malaysia in the context of Malaysia. But we have like uh, Dr. Yiwan Lo, uh, Dr. Wulan De Gantoro who have written about this uh, this subject specifically in um uh, in the context of Singapore and also Indonesian art. Um, but uh, um, I guess in a way uh, I would probably see that most of the audience maybe do not come from the arts uh, background but of, of course there's a few of my colleagues here as well who knows more about art but I guess uh, in a way let's start uh, the session uh, maybe to do a little bit of um, introduction Dan dia tak boleh gerak. Okay, by perhaps uh, looking into uh, Nocklin's, Linda Nocklin's seminar essay on women artists uh, that have been compiled and later published um, in a book. Uh, but her early essay is entitled, Why, Why Have There Been No Great Women Artists? Uh, and it, it was, the article was published in 1971, uh, but later on it was published as a book as well. So now it has reached somewhat the, the that cover that we have today is that the uh, 50th anniversary edition. So the essay and the book is widely recognized as the first true attempt at the feminist history of art that focuses on the systemic barriers that have hindered women's success, especially in the context of Western art. Uh, instead of addressing the question of why there were no great women artists within its flawed framework, Nocklin deconstructed the very notion of greatness by dismantling the fundamental assumptions that had historically centered a male-dominated concept of genius in the study of art. So... Um, Consequently, during the 1980s, art historians like Pollock and also Rosie Parker delved deeper into the field, scrutinizing the language employed in, in art history. They pointed out how gender biased terminology, such as quote unquote, old master and masterpiece, and probe uh, the traditional Western canon. The inquiries extended to the fundamental question of why male and female representations differ so significantly. So, and also this exploration echoed the ideas of John Berger, who in his 1972 work, Wings of Seeing, had concluded, concluded that, I quote, men look at women, women watch themselves being looked at, end quote. In essence, they contended that Western art perpetuates the existing societal disparities, reinforcing unequal relationships between genders. Okay. So um, to understand this historical context that is related to the emergence of feminist art in the West, hence uh, maybe a little bit of comparison uh, between the Asian context. Okay, and uh, I would like to highlight the fact that I'm using Asian and you know more focus in the context of Southeast Asia, but still in a very general manner, okay? Um, uh, to start off, I would like to demonstrate by using an interesting example by Gorilla, Gorilla Girl, Girls' work shown here, okay? Basically, Gorilla Girls began as an activist group and famously began their reaction to MoMA's international survey of recent painting and sculpture, a 1984 exhibition. Although the exhibition was supposed to represent the top artists in the world, out of, out of the 169 artists shown, only 13 were women. 
And the curator, Kinesen McShine, stated in interviews that, I quote, any artist who wasn't shown in the show would rethink his career. Okay, so that exhibition has been contested by Gorilla Girls. So it ends up, this group of artists protested outside on the opening night, okay? But they noticed that the onlookers weren't interested in their message. So a year later, Gorilla Girls form, uh, were formed with the aim of finding new ways uh, to revoke using street art. Okay, so that's the exhibition in which the 94 exhibition and now these are the kind of works that Gorilla Girls produce, okay. Um, basically, the question that we have here, so it's a big banner that they put outside. Do women have to be naked to get into the Metropolitan Museum? So uh, this huge text basically, uh, you know, raises the question in, uh, to the fact that only less than 5% of the artists in the modern art sections are women, but 85% of the nudes are female. Okay, so these are the kind of works that sort of like, you know, uh, brings more interest in terms of human artists, female artists, you know, in the context of uh, European art history. But um, so when we, we, we discuss about women artists or any women artists, uh, another example here. It, it's like losing again. Prof, mungkin prof boleh tekan ke next. Ah, like that too, prof. Okay, yeah. So, so these are among the posters that they, they you know, produce at the time, the advantages of being a women artist. So they list, you know, if I probably couldn't see it from here. Um, you know, do women have to get naked to get into the Met Museum? Bus companies are more enlightened than New York City art galleries. So with all the percentages, with how many bus drivers are, are you know, by women, you know, women drivers, okay? And uh, of course, so these are posters. They're not, you know, artwork, artwork per se, as what we know as artwork. But these, these are the kind of artworks that uh, actually raises questions rather than answers. Okay. So if we were to discuss works in the context of feminist art, it must be noted that the study of feminist art requires a certain understanding or context, largely within Euro-American art. Uh, we need to understand the historical context as it emerged during the feminist movements of the late 20th century as a response to gender inequalities of the world. Um, next, Prof. Sorry, Prof. Prof, like I didn't want to text you. So, of course, it challenges the patriarchy by challenging and deconstructing patriarchal norms and normal structures um, and also critiquing institutions for their historical exclusion of women artists. Okay, other key concepts within the context of feminist art, the understanding of female gaze, okay, um, as an alternative to the traditional male gaze, uh, issues of representation uh, in which feminist artists emphasize the importance of representing women's experiences, um, the changes in terms of subject matter, themes, you know, body art, body politics. And also, uh, consequently, there's a lot of uh, with the um, how um, you know over time. There's also a lot of interest within the context of cont contemporary art. Um, we can see works by women artists who involves a lot of activism, okay, interse intersectional intersectionality, okay, and also works that involves a lot of mediums and forms and also works that involve collaborations and also activisms. However, the focus of this lecture pertains to chosen pieces created by, by women artists from Southeast Asia. So it is also important to acknowledge the contrasting context rooted in cultural, educational, social, and political, and also religious aspects between Asian and also women, Western women's societal position. For instance, perhaps the Asian women, uh, you know, Asian women artists were more uh, are being more influenced by Confucianism or Islam that they might 
exhibit a greater acceptance of traditional roles where women are perceived as patient and composed um, spouses and homemakers, um, you know, integral to the societal harmony. Consequently, women artists who prioritize their family's welfare over their artistic pursuits may experience slightly less feelings of sorrow or resentment, okay? Um, of, although this paper does, um, uh, does not espouse that the works presented here as feminist art, okay, uh, we should we would observe how some of these key points okay, intersect with the works produced by women artists within the larger construct of the contemporary art, okay, which I will also discuss in the third part of this lecture. So, um, for the, the purpose of this, like, this lecture, I'm, I'm dividing it into three sections. Uh, perhaps, uh, next. Uh, the discussion about early representations of women, women art as trailblazers in the 50s and 60s, and uh, thirdly, the works, works by women artists as contemporary voices. Okay, next. Okay, all right. In the early representation of Southeast Asia, but I'm using the term quite loosely here. I wouldn't like claim like uh, I'm covering Laos, Myanmar, you know, uh, you know, this is a bit of a teaser. Okay. So um, uh, in the early representation of Southeast Asia, that is mostly in the form of less landscape paintings, mostly produced by the colonizers, the locals tend to be uh, conspicuously absent absent, underrepresented, uh, underrepresented, and also lack recognition. It, the, the images of women, if there are any, were very rare. Okay, nevertheless, in the earlier works of Damien Domingo, okay, uh, Damien Domingo established the official Philippine Art Academy, uh, and he specializes in miniature portraits and religious imagery and produce limna art. Limna art is kind of like illustrative art, okay, illustrative art, to so really produce on a small scale. So in the work here, for example, Una Mestiza de Manila, um, a Mestiza woman in her formal wear attests to this rarity of a woman being presented in the limna art. So it is such that he produces limna art, but perhaps... Um, uh, allow him to render meticulous attention to the detail of the society, the social hierarchy, dressed status, wealth, and occupation in which he could be seen through the works here. So, in the context of Malaysia, although many early paintings produced in the region, okay, uh, could, uh, you know, Malay and also Singapore, were mostly in the form of landscape painting. Reza Pirasa, however, asserted that the uh, that the works of several early oil paintings by Lu Kui Song and Odon Paris should also be highlighted as early modern paintings in Malaya. Next. So this also uh, include the work of Odon Eric Paris, who painted the portrait of his wife in her wedding dress, but also consequently, so these are quite quite limited, um, you know, uh, representation uh, that were produced at the time, okay? Odon Paris, the father of the current Eric Paris that is uh, being exhibited at the National Art Gallery. Um, okay, so, um, so we have also Vietnamese artist Tong Van, who was able to combine both Western aesthetic techniques like linear perspective, imitation of nature, and modeling in his or you know, in, in the work here, two maidens and a little boy portraying a size, slice of life in the 1940s Hanoi. We can see, uh, we can observe here uh, the two girls who share a common uh, a moment of intimacy with the little boy. Okay, the three characters forming a triangular composition within a vertical frame. Okay, a uh, classical arrangement reminiscent of Western painting. So, um, okay, in the realm of art, for example, next, 
there has long been an implicit convention where male artists primarily really cater to a male audience. Men are often symbolically portrayed as the quote unquote I, a powerful artistic metaphor representing knowledge detached from the phys physical body through their commanding gaze. Throughout Western cultural history, art making has predominantly been viewed as inherently masculine pursuit. As per feminist theory, the concept of the male gaze involves a sexualized depiction of women. By reducing women to objects, the male gaze presents women based on the sexual interests of heterosexual male observers. It portrays the female body and character as an item meant for male observation, possession, and domination. So throughout history, the objectification of women has remained pervasive in literature, cinema, and the visual arts. For instance, um, in cinema, you know, close-up shots frequently emphasize the bodies and sexualized features of female actresses. Exploring the works of Philippine artists like Pedro Melorosa here, and also um, uh, Fernando Amorsolo, within the framework of the male gaze, unveils intriguing nuances. Their landscape paintings, portraits, and depictions of every, everyday scenes like the rice fields, uh, shown here, and also uh, mango pickers present women engaged in routine tasks, portraying them as both modest and dignified. In the in, in the rice field, women are depicted actively involved in planting the paddy, while a man uh, is observed overseeing their work from the left side of the image. It is always like the, the kind of representation in which the women are more active and the male as observers. Okay, so next. So, uh, yet uh, we can observe in, the, in these two images, for example, this underlying mundane uh, task is the subtle lens of the male, ga male gaze framing these women within the boundaries of traditional roles and often highlighting their grace and beauty, therefore referencing the observer's perception of femininity within expected societal norm. Similarly, we also have, we can observe another work by Hussein Enas. Next. The tobacco leaves, Mamate Daun Tembakau, in which in the artwork um, uh, produced in 1962, portrays a daylight scene featuring three Malay girls amidst, uh, to, um, amidst the tobacco field. These girls, presented in the painting, exhibit gentle, pleasant expressions adorned with fleeting smiles, uh, attired in form fitting batik garments. The depiction of these figures against the landscape serves as a focal point, accentuated by the stark contrast between the vivid colors of their clothing and the intricate patterns of the batik sarungs against the backdrop of the lush tobacco leaves. Moreover, the manner in which their clothing contours to the body hints at the possibility of the male gaze subtly influencing the portrayal framing the girls in a certain aesthetic that might appeal to the observers, especially male observers' perception. Okay, next. All right. Okay, not, not all, you know, negative stories, okay? <laughs> I would say that uh, we could also start to see women as art trailblazers, okay? Uh, in this case, in the context of Thailand, okay, although... Uh, the, uh, the accessibility of art education is very limited, uh, you know, due to perhaps the limited access to training opportunities, uh, specifically in terms of mastering all painting techniques. But in Bangkok, a group of women residing with King Chulalongkorn as his official royal concubines explored or managed to explore uh, the realm of photography during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Okay, Scholar Leslie Woodhouse extensively examined their photographic contributions. These images captured by these pioneering female pho photographers offer an intensely personal insight into how photography became integrated into the everyday lives of women within the secluded royal set setting. For in instance, you could see here an image portrays a camera mounted on a tripod alongside a cluster of concubines. Um, 
pit in you know, trying to take uh, trying to um taking up uh mga magambala okay, you know, taking the the photo okay so um especially um uh, this image features a bonak capturing a moment of her father through the lens okay so um uh, these ladies were taking a lot of pictures surrounding them okay and you know a, a presentation of it an image taken of them taking a picture of the father okay so that sort of like encapsulates the kind of activities that they managed to do at the time okay although uh, technically they are the uh, royalties concubine during the 1950s, okay, next. We can see a more, a more, you know, 1950s witness how women began to be involved or play a more serious role in the arts. George Chen or Chang Li Ying uh, was a Singaporean painter renowned for her post impressionist style, all paintings in the early 20th century. Eventually, um, she played a pioneering role in Singapore's visual art scenes and contributed to the emergence of the Nanyang art style despite her, her all-male colleagues at the Nanyang Academy of Arts in Singapore. But of course, okay, what enables her to, to, to do this? You know, the, the, how does the opportunity came um, you know, uh, to her? Uh, it must be noted, however, that she was born into a wealthy family in the Chinese province of Zhejiang. She grew up in Paris, where her father, Chang Sunche, was an antique dealer and also a supporter of Sun Yat Sen's revolutionary efforts. And um, so she's not some someone who's nobody. She has access to education. She had she has the privilege of bringing, uh, you know, that exposed her to art. Uh, she studied a little bit uh, in the U.S., but later she returned to Paris in 1927, uh, in which she continued to her, you know, to con continue her art education. Okay, uh, Georgia uh, moved to Singapore in 1953 and began to exhibit at the Chinese Chamber of Commerce and the Singapore Art Society. And uh, in 1954, she also became a part-time teacher at the Nanyang Academy of Fine Arts, in which when where she worked until 1980. So um, from 1951 onwards, George's paintings changed uh, to go back, um, you know, resulting a combination of her Western training with Asian themes. Okay, we can could see how she used the post-impressionist uh, approach in the works that she produces. Okay, next. So we can see her uh, a local subject matter, fruits with the rambutans, with the bananas, you know, but the style uh, influenced by her post-impressionist approach um, in terms of her artwork. Okay, next. Another, another artist from Indonesia is Kartika Afandi, who is the daughter of Afandi. Okay. She started her educational journey from Taman Dewasa in Taman Siswa, Jakarta, and she st later studied at University of Tagore, Shanti Nikitan, India. Um, from age seven, because she's her father is an artist, so the father had already instructed her or taught her how to paint with fingers and also tubes directly on ca canvas. If you're more familiar of Afandi's work, you can observe the traces of the father's influence on, on her work, okay, in which um, th there's a lot of impasto technique involved and there's a lot of like, you know, usage of fingers and then brushes and all that, okay? So, um, Karti like her father, Kartika has also often painted rural and dispossessed people such as fishermen, farmers, workers, and beggars, resulting in paintings when viewed up close, resolve into strong abstract statements uh, of the energetically, energetically applied in pastel oils. Okay, next. Okay, besides being an artist, we could also in see in the Philippines two key uh, women figures, Purita Kalas Ledesma, pictured on the right, and also Lydia Villanueva Argila on the left, who were just passive witness of the to the evolution of art history in the Philippines, but they were also playing active roles. Okay, basically Ledesma pioneered the establishment of the first art association of the Philippines (AAP) in 1948. 
creating a platform for artists and art enthusiasts to engage in discussions about modern art through exhibitions, talks, and various public programs. On the other hand, uh, Argila founded the Philippine Art Gallery, or PAG, in the 1950s, make it, marking it a place marking its place as one of the earliest modern art galleries in the Philippines. Leaders' vision for PAG was articulated in its guiding principles. We believe, I, I quote, we believe that if local art is to flourish, the support should come not so much from others as from ourselves. We believe that art should be part of the life and living, that the civilized person should go into an art gallery in the same way he goes to a bookshop to buy something he can take home, enjoy, and live with. So basically, the two ladies here were the ones who actually were like really, you know, pushing art in the Philippines at the time, especially modern art. Okay, next. All right, okay, let's go back to the more recent times. <laughs> Not so recent though, this is the early 1990s. So, uh, um, you know, I, you know the, the third part of this presentation is entitled Works by Women Artists as Contemporary Voices. Of course, um, perhaps I do not cover so much, you know, artists working on, you know, modern art and all that, okay? But like, I'm sort of like jumping through, um, you know, into contemporary art. Okay, uh, strictly speaking, the term contemporary art, perhaps, you know, in general refers to art made and produced by artists living today. Uh, that is the most sort of like a very general understanding, uh, but uh, it also uh, sort of like focus to in which artists work, um, the kind of artwork that responds to a global to a global environment that is culturally diverse, technologically advancing, and also multifaceted. Working in a wide range of mediums, contemporary artists often reflect and comment on modern day society. When engaging with contemporary art, viewers are challenged to set aside questions such as, is the work of art good? Okay, Is the work aesthetically pleasing? Um, meaning that they, they are, you know, the, the aesthetics or the, you know, how good the work is, is not the main concern, okay? Instead, viewers consider whether art is challenging or interesting, okay? So it's no more about aesthetics, about beauty and being pretty, you know, or having an artwork that you can, you know, buy and sort of like adorn your, the, the living room of your home anymore, okay? So um, in the question or the interest from the uh, viewers, um, you know, if they come into the gallery, you know, like which work is, you know, interesting, for example, okay? So basically, contemporary artists question, may question traditional ideas of how art is defined, what constitutes art, and how art is made while creating a dialogue with, and in some cases, rejecting the styles and movements that came before them. So as feminist art had created opportunities and spaces that previously did not exist for women and minority artists, in Southeast Asia, more and more women artists works within a construct of contemporary art, uh, but not necessarily identifying themselves as feminist artists. Okay? So um, this is where I think that uh, in, in the context of Southeast Asia, it is, um, it is more um, women artists produce contemporary artworks and the uh, sort of mediums and techniques of and the approach of contemporary art allows them to uh, be more flexible in the kind of art making. Okay, and it does not necessarily means uh, by doing that they became feminists because most of the subject matters are not on that regard. Okay, so so uh, if we are talking about concept of uh, contemporary art, certain ideas like conceptual, um, the ideas of having audience engagement, artworks become more time specific, uh, diverse in medium, and also artworks, you know, become have more innovation and artists, um, you know, experiment a lot, uh, and also the artworks engage with many contemporary issues, and also it becomes more global in. Uh, in scope and also, of course, interdisciplinary as well. So, um, but the term contemporary itself is fluid and continuously evolved as time progresses. So what is contemporary 
definition, it sort of like always change, you know, as the term itself, you know, denotes the recentness, okay? So what is considered contemporary art today may change as new artistic movements and ideas emerge. Consequently, contemporary art is defined by, by its relationship to the present moment and its ability to reflect the evolving nature of culture and society. Um, next. Oh, okay, that purple, this one. Okay, all right. So, um, uh, so for example, Aramayanis tries us work here. Oh, she always often engaged with contemporary issues. Um, since uh, born in 1961 in Bandung, she established herself in the 1980s as a pioneer in the field of performance art, okay, which is later. But one of her earliest work here, shown here, uh, called um, Title Atelier, okay, 1994, grapples with the intricate themes encompassing discrimination, intolerance, and violence against women within her homeland, Indonesia. This thought provoking display, okay, what is in the box, okay, were like featured items such as Buddha icon, the Quran, Coca Cola bottle, a fan, a Pakwa mirror, a drum, a box of sand, and even condoms, okay, all carefully arranged within a glass box. Despite resembling a traditional museum vitrine, okay, showcasing the typical objects, these items stood as potent symbols representing religion, sexuality, and capitalism. So, uh, you know, however, this juxtaposition of elements deeply offended certain members of Muslim fundamentalist group. Imagine having a Quran and condom next. You know? So, of course, this prompted immediate censorship of the artwork and even resulting in death threats against the artists. Not only Quran, because you have like also the Buddhist statue as well. So it is very sort of like conflicting items that you have. Um, so it obviously it offended some uh, Muslim uh, groups in Indonesia. But okay, eventually her, her practice sort of like evolves and uh, what I will be sharing here are more in the context of performance as well because when we talk about modern art, our impression will be mostly paintings, but in terms of contemporary art, um, such um, artworks you know, evolves. It is not only limited to two-dimensional artworks or even three-dimensional artworks. So there's a lot of like you know, uh, projects, these community uh, engagement, collaboration, and things like that. As um, that is mostly the kind of approach within the contemporary art. Okay, next. So you could see here some of her work in the series of Project Bendera, okay, flag project, a nomadic community-based project started in 2006. Aramayani's artistic endeavors transcend geographical boundaries as evidenced by her series of site-specific performance involving vibrant flags adorned with carefully stitched words that she had worked collaboratively with diverse communities from Yogyakarta, Germany, Singapore, Japan, Tibet, and more. Through these collaborations, Aramayani consciously engages with multifaceted societal concerns spanning social, political, religious, and environmental issues. Okay, uh, the act of uh, stitching words onto these colorful flags emerges as a poignant artistic expressions. Um, amplifying the voices and agency and serve as symbols of empowerment, embo uh, embodying, embodying notions of strength, dignity, and inclusivity for these marginalized communities. Mungkin um, boleh share sikit YouTube. Is that, is that possible? YouTube boleh? YouTube. Boleh buka YouTube tak? Oh, dah buka. I just need to open the link. Okay, on YouTube. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I not, I not share a video. Okay, okay.
Boleh ke? Kalau tak boleh, then uh, it's okay lah. Maybe I can share the link, you know. And then, you know. I'm not sure. Itu macam kita. Ah, the video from YouTube. yang set yang yang set disuan pun boleh ah uh, just show one kena copy link kot mau lagi okey atas atas sorry nombor atas 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 lagi atas okay ya yeah. one more okay ya yeah. that one yang bendera tu ya ya ayat tu Okay, so this is the the her installation. Cause she did a lot, a lot of this at many many events and also places. Yeah, so it started in two thousand and six. Uh, but she brought this like everywhere else. Okay, um, okay, we'll see a little bit of the video to give a sense, lah, to give a sense the kind of artwork that she produces. Okay. Okay, mungkin boleh move to 3.4, minit 3.4. So the words are all stitched on the on the flag, okay? And um, you know, it has different different words and different meaning. Uh, in particular, um, to the location of the where she does this performance, okay? Yeah, yeah. So so now the works, they are not central to uh the the artist anymore. It involves a lot of people, okay? Collaboration, communities, okay. So mungkin tiga poin empat boleh ya? Skip sikit. Ya, yeah, performance. Ya. Yeah. So the performance are actually in the context of visual art. So they bukan performance like the theater and all that. So because that is more rehearsed. This is more like impromptu that uh, you do plan but then macam dia tak ada scripted lah. Okay. Yes, we do have, but not as, uh, this is a, a, a very big project lah sebenarnya. Actually, um, afterward, I'll also show a few more of like, you know, Sharon Chin and all that. Okay. So they were like, you know, uh, calling, you know, what are the texts that is being written on the flags, okay? Okay.
Okay, boleh pause lah dulu. I go back to the PowerPoint. Okay. Can always like Google this up, okay? All right. So, uh, uh, the next artist, okay, uh, next one, uh, PowerPoint. Ah, uh, Okay. Okay, Araya. Okay, Thai artist Araya. Uh, Tuan duduk sini, sebab ada, ada lagi YouTube. <laughs> uh, Ara, Araya Rasjam Ransuk, performance started in 1998. Okay, after her early experiments with intaglio pre-making and also sculptural installation, Araya began to concentrate on film and video. Okay, her work is an articulation of personal loss and the movement between life and death, approach in a way that challenges viewers' moral sense and tolerance through complex and provocative imagery, for example, in this reading from Male and Female Corps, 1998. Basically, she goes around and read to this corpse. Okay? So, um, and also, uh, in a Conversation 1, 2005, uh, the artist positions herself amidst a pair of shrouded corpse facing away from the audience. Boleh um, main yang tu? Link kat bawah. Gonna go to that website. Okay, just uh, go up, I think. Go, um, okay, bawa, bawa, bawa. Okay, yeah, yang tu, yeah. Okay, this is just a snippet of it, okay? What she has here is like, she's like reading to the dua mayat lah, okay? I mean, I couldn't imagine this being done in Malaysia, okay? <laughs> All right, but what, okay. Um, Araya here is shown instructing a classroom of six corps, okay? Um, you couldn't hear, but she's actually like, you know, talking, okay? Satirizing academic convention uh, in which the living professor teaching death to an audience already well-versed in the subject. You know, the audience is actually a dead, dead person, okay? So, Araya engages in the contemplative, contemplative ritual, humming, chanting, and engaging in dialogue with the disease figures. The artwork draws inspiration from the Thai Buddhist practice of communing with the departed over several days. Jadi, um, like a, um, you know, a... Uh, in the process of um, kematian tersebut lah, okay. So, um, guiding the transition in the spiritual spiritual afterlife. Here, the artist assumes the role of a spiritual guide, navigating the souls into their next existence, okay. So, this is actually captured on video and it becomes the performance, uh, that you know, a recording of the performance art. So, uh, next uh, PowerPoint. Okay, next. Okay, in this, the treachery of the moon, uh, uh, um, you could see the continuation of Araya's exploration of contrasting world, interweaving the fictional realm of television drama with the stark reality of political upheaval in the 21st century. Basically, the performance is that she's watching the TV uh, in which initially it was just a drama, in which like we watch dramas every time, like seven o'clock, TV three dramas and all that. But then as she watched, then that uh, the 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 shows changes to the political reporting of what what is happening in Bangkok. So the whole setup in which she's watching with the dog becomes the performance itself. Okay. So um, this is available on YouTube, so you could Google it up. Okay, so next. Yeah, but it's more of her personal observation in the situation that Bangkok yang tengah huru hara and all that can her. No, because she always have that dog in her in her compound. Yeah, so it like um that's that's like a little bit of what is um the the kind of sort of like a, a borderless your personal space and uh, the public space. That's always the interplay of that, okay? What is your personal domain now also becomes public 
when it's some it, it, when it is uh, being transformed into such performance okay all right so next okay so um we can see some of these works for example Sharon Keen's um engagement uh, with contemporary art uh, in which she invites active participation and engagement from the audience okay so Mandi Bunga was performed in uh, 2003 that involves and participated by over 100 people who decked themselves out in yellow and much from the Singapore Art Museum to the National Museum of Singapore in the Malay culture Mandi Bunga of like the flower bath is often associated with the practice or ritual to be bad luck or to increase auras okay uh but how because wearing the the, the yellow uh, you know shirts and blouses with the yellow yellow basins you know um so um co coincidentally or, or perhaps not so coincidentally has the um the uh you know the, the, the a reading of contextualizing within the bursi okay bursi uh, the coalition of free and fair elections that calls for a thorough reform of the electoral electoral process in malaysia so when whenever rallies for bursi are held uh, supporters would wear yellow t-shirts as a symbol of protest so when she did this that's, a, that's either directly or indirectly with that, you know, Bursi uh, event, okay? Sharon Chin explained that Madimunga came from her experiences in taking part in Bursi 2.0 and 3.0 and uh, asserted that Madimunga has nothing and yet everything to do with Bursi. So this performance consists of three parts, the gathering of 100 people to, to bath together in public, wearing the yellow sarong, uh, later, uh, of course, a set of images from the performance are being exhibited, uh, documenting the process and outcomes of the performance art. Okay, through this performance, she asks, what does it mean to do something alone? And also, what does it mean to do something together? And how can we be ourselves within others? Okay, so her next work, okay, uh, next one. Okay, uh, like satu. Okay, uh, Sharon was also invited to participate um, in, in her uh, Singapore Biennale in 2019, in which she invited both the Malaysian and Singaporean public to come and help sew her pieces for her large-scale fabric installation taken from flags of Malaysian political parties. Okay, so it was commissioned a perform participatory performance okay, and installation for Singapore Biennale 2009, comprised of 13 geometric shape banners in solid colors, prominently displayed at the entrance of National Gallery of Singapore. These banners hold a significant narrative fashion from the reclaimed fabric source from political party flags gathered post Malaysia's historic 14th general elections. This pivotal event in 2019 marked a monumental shift, at least for a little bit, Okay, in the country's governance, ushering in a new era of a change in government affairs in Malaysia's history. The project extended its reach across Malaysia and Singapore through two participatory events. The first, the initial engagement took place at the National Art Gallery in Malaysia uh, and followed by a subsequent event at the National Gallery in Singapore. So basically what she did was that, um, you know, she, there were calls, you know, who those who want to be involved and all that to come to National Art Gallery. Um, they were like given some instructions. They were given the, the flags to cut and stitch together. Okay. So uh, eventually also the same in Singapore. Uh, next. So uh, the same, you know, whatever left of it that uh, Singapore public also, also uh, had, were also invited to come in and stitch and they sort of like put this, put this up as an installation please okay so it is both performance and also installation okay so uh next okay we could also see how we i learn uh also involves the community uh around her okay so the island is uh you know known for her contemporary practices but in in the last i think like Maybe like 10 years, she has sort of like moved back to, to Koto Kinabalu, okay, um, and uh, founded her practice based on communal practices, okay, evident in her chosen medium, the tikar or the woven mat. She views weaving as a unifying cultural tra tradition, binding the, 
the inhabitants of Sabah, particularly undocumented migrants or stateless individuals native to Borneo. She delves into the creation of Borneo Heart, a project deeply rooted in personal connections, tracing the evolution of concepts and communities within the context of the woven mat. She, so basically, uh, she brings, she's trying to bring the narratives intimately closer to the idea of Tana and Tana Air, you know, the land and so homeland, the, where the mat is ceremoniously laid out or unfold, sharing these tales without singular. Uh, singularly emphasizing the artist's role, but rather highlighting a collaborative cultural endeavor. So, um, so this uh, present, uh, you know, this the result of this map was shown later in various galleries, and she also produced uh, a video that is, um, you know, named Tika Ribbon, okay, 2020, which is on the left. So that's the still from the video in which um, the the woven mat, you know, uh, small in size, uh, but Basically, it becomes like a, a um, encyclopedia of weaving techniques in which this is such a long that's being rolled over, um, you know, from uh, from the land to the sea, uh, in which the undocumented uh, uh, bajalau lives. Okay, so um, especially um, this two hundred foot long textile over the water surrounding Omadal Island. Okay. Reaching towards the cluster of steel houses belong to the seafaring Samadhi Laut community. All right. So, um, okay, next. Okay, so some of the exhibition where she exhibited. Okay, so, and so also she invited a few of the weavers to come with her to share, do the sharing, uh, you know, to get them also involved because in such practices in which you involve community, the artist does not become central anymore. So there's a lot of, she tries a lot to engage with, with a lot of, um, or, or at least to bring them out with her in uh, as part of the project, okay, to be able to explain about the work as well. So, okay, next. Okay, we have artists like Mela Jarsma here, okay, um, all right, who um, actually produced, you know, arts, but based on um, costume, Okay, so this is where the experimentation and innovation uh, in terms of concepts and ideas comes in. Okay, next. Okay, we can see how, uh, you know, she explored certain ideas, uh, you know, sometimes can be a bit kitschy and all that, but as, as part of, not as a, a very still, you know, visual out, uh, visual art output, but it's something that it, that should be worn or presented in such a way to be worn and shown. Okay. Boleh okay. tunjuk YouTube kat atas. Ada YouTube link. Okay, maybe we can just like skip, skip a bit, just to give uh like the, the sense of okay, uh, okay, okay, yang tu, the sense of what. Skip this one. Yeah. Okay, yeah, tadi yang uh image karya tu, yeah. Okay, cuba next. Okay, ah uh, yeah.
so like we, we have a sense what she's trying to do is mostly actually like uh, based on costume, but it's not exactly costume that you wear. So it's basically an artistic statement through, uh, you know, how she wants to it to be presented to. That is something that is, you know, you know, one could wear as well, you know, and yeah. Okay, uh, back to the PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay, next. Okay, uh, of course, uh, talking about, you know, innovations and creativity and also technology, we have also done our own acclaimed stamps, uh, acclaimed a work from her captiv captivating installation crafted from discovered objects and imageries. Um, Donna Ong is a Singaporean artist. She, she produces the forest speaks back that delves into the tale of tropical forests, exploring the journeys of individuals from colder climates who ventured into this fertile land. Basically, she's talking about Singapore and how the British colonizers came in, uh, the kind of like uh, issues that um, we had from the perception of the colonizer and also uh, the regional, uh, you know, uh, people who are already there in Singapore. Um, so basically, her installation chronicles the in intricate relationship of um, this um, new, uh, the idea of the new land, okay, revealing the simultaneous affection and also aversion towards the region, um, in which her, you know, her visualization not only through those images but also through the installation as well. Um, um, okay, next one, yeah, some of the snippets of her work. Okay, okay, next. Okay, that's a YouTube. Yeah. Okay, this is the final one, okay. <laughs> So just uh Apani, uh just move on. Basically these are like her interviews, okay. Tapi, okay, yep, tadi, okay, yes. Just to give you all the sense of the installation that she produces, okay. So she plays a lot with found objects, glasses, you know, lightings, uh, even paintings, the one that she had behind. Okay. Okay, to one more we skip lah. Uh, okay, yeah. The installation view, okay, the installation view. She basically like, likes nature. That's a lot of like, you know, floral, uh, luscious bushes, uh, plants and all that in her installation. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sarina, for such, uh, I would say, uh, an enchanting and uh, enlightening uh, uh, talk on the art. The key words which I gathered from this lecture is art making, artwork, and art maker. Uh, and uh, it gives to, perhaps to me, uh, 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 quite a uh, reason uh, engagement with uh, art I've got, I've been I've been reading about art over the last decades or so is the different ways in which we can see art I mean you don't talk about uh, visual art but yeah. art performance art installation yeah as part of this uh, discourse uh with that I uh, we, we invite discussions uh, we have a number of artists of course.
Yeah, okay. This uh, Prof, thank you very much. Uh, it's very inspiring and uh, many questions have come to our minds or myself. <laughs> um, uh, first of all, a practical question. Um, I could not highlight all the issues. Uh, in Europe or in Western countries, there are some uh, yearly by uh, annual uh, activities regarding to this contemporary art. Uh, is there any activity in Southeast Asia or any um, uh, any uh, venture in coming uh, years? Because uh, art, uh, as you mentioned, implicit probably, uh, connecting people. And one of the significant issue issues over here in ASEAN is uh, how to connect people beyond the politics, etc. The second one, uh, sex in art, I mean, in the early part of your presentation. Well, um, this is quite problematic because of um, art uh, is bound to a certain epistemology, again, the nature of this institution. So when we observe sex in art, starting from Hellenism or Hellenic culture in the West, um, not just the presenting or representing body, but beyond it, um, arguing that this is exactly a representation of uh, supranatural beings, let's say in beauty, in power, in hierarchy, etc. When we come to Southeast Asia uh, question, what is uh, the epistemological background of these artists? Of course, these are coming from different uh, ethnic structures or religious structures, etc. Thank you very much. Okay, tough, tough questions. <laughs> uh, the first first question was more on the um, art and public engagement. Uh, is that correct? Okay, like in Southeast Asia, right? Yeah, so, so, pardon? Regular activities, okay. So, okay, uh, I think like in the last maybe in the last maybe 20 20 -ish years there are more such um, um, you know ways of art making uh, but of course not all artists does that okay of course there are there are artists that produces no you know two-dimensional three-dimensional art are still you know um, around and still produce uh, still produce those kinds of works okay in which they, they produce and also exhibited in galleries in the normal setting. So those are still alive and well, okay? But of course, not all artists would, um, you know, uh, would want to limit themselves into that kind of art makings in which they start to explore, okay? They ex explore other forms of art making, especially the ones in the context of the ones that I've, um, you know, basically discussed just now. The artists, uh, maybe let's start off with the, they do have art training, but later on, there's a lot of question on, like, you know, what art can do or what can they do with art that helps or addresses questions within the society. So it is not a, it's no more about aesthetics, okay? Uh, so it is also about like how to make it relevant. How can they use art to sort of like bring certain realization of certain issues? So certain artists goes that way. So. Um, but it doesn't mean that all artists, you know, of that nature, okay? Um, also, of course, it also differs from one country to another. Um, but I would say uh, perhaps in, you know, every country there would be maybe quite a handful of artists that goes along that line, okay? So um, the second question, Okay, I, I wouldn't say exactly. I mean, um, you're going back to Hellenistic and all that, all that. Okay, which is true, in that sense. But if you were to if you were to go to the long history of of uh, three dimensional art, for example, of course there are statues, um, Hinduism, Buddhism influence. So in which these statues would have, um, you know, bodies, female bodies. Uh, uh, as part of that. Um, what would be the epistemology? I would say uh, probably uh, I need to read more on that. <laughs> but um, because my area actually mostly focuses on modern and contemporary art. Um, uh, but of course, those kind of quote-unquote 
art, or though it is being include, included in many texts, art history texts, but we should also be be um, aware that there are really just nuances that comes with the kind of uh, forms or material culture or ob such objects. Okay. Uh, yeah. So basically, that's my response. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Uh, in us, which uh, is predominant in, mm -hmm. in the later examples that you gave. Um, also, within that, within that public and private space, you have the political connotations, protests, sarcasm, and so on. Uh, how how would this uh, augur in in Southeast Asia? Uh, uh, okay, you, you mentioned uh, Thailand, for example, and uh, perhaps the Philippines, and Malaysia is catching up. <laughs> so I don't know uh, how how would you see this in in, in KL, for example? Okay, I, I would say um, in a context of KL or Malaysian art, um, artist sometimes artists get away with being political. Because a lot of, um, you know, Malaysian publics are not, um, perhaps they are not well versed within the arts so much. Um, but then, uh, but we, we must also, in you know, uh, be aware that, for example, in Malay culture, the notion of berlapit uh, is quite pertinent, okay? And uh, though in my own work, when I study like mission arts since the 1990s, there's a lot of like readings of artwork, Malaysian art, uh, you know, art, artwork by Malaysian artists that connotates political, um, you know, criticism and all that. But when it is being produced, it is not um, directly or strongly uh, being presented in such a way. There's always the aesthetics coming, you know, so that, and also uh, the notion of, uh, you know, Essentially, you know, artists would want to have their artworks being, you know, being bought uh, in the, within, within the gallery setting, the collectors and all that. So there's a little bit of, you know, maybe like certain approach that tends to be like saved. Uh, we are talk, um, you know, they're poly political, tapi very subtle. Subdued. Eh? Yeah, very subtle. Yeah, subdued. Example of this, uh, uh, perhaps over the last few decades, perhaps mm. uh, in terms of art in Malaysia. Uh, can, can you give some examples? Okay, maybe uh, I'm like thinking about maybe works by Zulkifli Yusof. Okay, Zulkifli Yusof. There's a lot of critical in which he, he refers to a lot of Malay hikayats. Okay, uh, the criticism of power, for example. But then by highlighting the fact that he's referring to the Malay hikayats, it's already like subdued in that sense because. You, if you were study, if you were to study, so there's always certain political events that actually happen during the year that he produces that kind of uh, works. Uh, Maybe uh, the more or less overt would be Ahmad Fuad Osman, okay, the, which you know the ones that uh, uh, with Anwar's punch, you know, eyes and all that. that okay. There's more uh, overt, yeah. Any woman artist here? Woman artist, perhaps not so much. Perhaps not so much, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Because yes. you, you mentioned uh, uh, Sharon Chin. Uh, she, oh, yeah. Uh, she that in Singapore and Malaysia. Uh, uh, and, and, uh, okay, uh, there's, there's a little bit like, sub, subdued yeah. with that. And even though like within the words, you see, it can be bursi, it cannot be bursi, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, so there's no direct, like, this is politics. <laughs> this is about Malaysian politics. So okay. it's not. But it's the, not. the word reclaim that you mentioned as part of the... Uh, title is, is, mm -hmm. uh, has strong connotations in yeah. politics yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the work the, the flag the uh, you know she, she you know collected those um, those uh, political parties flags when of course that the act of taking those flags is actually poli political as well mm -hmm. um, uh, but then like at the end of the day 
what is being held up as the installation doesn't look directly as political flags mm -hmm. kan it's just the stitches of that yes yes kan and it involves a lot of people that it might they might have different kinds of political allegiance for example so yeah. it might be that it might not be that uh, even with mandi bunga uh, so there are like ways in which that you weave yeah. your way around but it's it's it runs well it it runs to a certain extent in terms yeah. of the depth of uh, the psyche yeah psyche yeah. or interpretation of the yeah. artwork yes yeah if you were to sometimes you can either you read directly to the through the artist statements or you make argument based on your own interpretation of the artwork okay all right thank you thank you yeah yeah Why it is subdued? Yeah, maybe you can you can explain why it is subdued. Um, then the other thing is that if it is subdued and subtle, how is the message understood by especially non-artists and the normal people? Yeah, that's a what well, that is a very good question. Why subdued? Okay, maybe. Um, I don't know. It's the artistic approach trying to be like safe, perhaps. Yeah, that, certain in my sense is that that self censorship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. self censorship. It's yeah. it's what more in Malaysia than other. Yeah, countries? it's more in Malaysia than. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really would like to know uh, if uh, there is any differences between uh, representative uh, of women mm -hmm. in uh, female uh, artists between the Southeast Asia country. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, I mean, I wanted to exactly know, is there any differences between Muslim and non-Muslim country mm -hmm. in this subject? Yeah, I, I, of course. Of course, when we are talking about women artists, so that is a very broad criteria. Uh, we need to study within the context as well. Okay, women artists in Malaysia. Okay, even 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 in Malaysia, there's a lot of different contexts or experiences that one has from artist A to artist B. So that that makes sort of like a how one produces an artwork. That is different from the next artist, for example. And of course, there's huge differences between one's experience, a woman experience in Malaysia, than in Indonesia, than in Thailand, than in Manila, and all that. So there's a lot of demarcation in terms of personal experience that would influence um, their art making. So um, if you were to sort of like blanket a certain sort of national identity within the context of women artists, uh, in the context of contemporary art approach, I think probably that's that's perhaps not a very subtle, suitable way to look at it, uh, because you know um, since the internet, there's a lot of exchanges of knowledge, information, inspiration that crosses border. You know, a long time ago, you know, there's limitation to what you read or what you are exposed to in classes and all that books, for example. But now, there are more exchanges or at least we can it's hard to say but then if you were to look at your instagram you were following like artists from us uk and all over the world then it's very difficult for you even to trace you were inspired by who right because you are so exposed so i think perhaps that question probably not appropriate to be asked in the context of the world today but maybe in the context of the nation building you know uh, as um, each nation within context of Saudi, each again independence. There's always that kind of issue. So, so depending on which set of artists we're examining, uh, perhaps uh, that question probably not so relevant today than it was like maybe like fifty years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any comments or questions? One last, one last uh, uh, question. Or oh. If uh, yeah, okay. yeah, you want to say something else? Uh, no, yeah. I. Yeah, go ahead. Any, uh, apa ada soalan ke tadi? Um, terlalu banyak, but later I'll ask you. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah. Yes. Just would like to comment uh, about uh topic of women artists. Yeah. Yeah, I think just like in other other profession mm -hmm. or other fields, of course now it's different. Uh I think in the field of art, visual art, women artists is less than male artists. Mm. And it's a question of, you know, not just that, uh, in terms of, you know, to the extent that sometimes as uh, we have to create an exhibition for women, for women artists. artists, just to project women artists. Mm. Uh, I don't know about the topic uh, uh, that I think applies to all. And there are some serious women artists, but also I think as a tradition of art, we have not, perhaps I may be wrong, uh, come to the stage of collection, active collection or act active consciousness of collecting works of women artists or even active engagement uh, into arts as one of the uh, ideas uh, mm. that need to be uh, supported, mm. developed and, you know, uh, be, mm. be part of, yeah. uh, you know, uh, collectors, be part of life. Mm. That's my general observation. Yeah. Thank you. I agree with you. Definitely. I've never met a collector who only collects women artists. And the, most of the collectors are, yeah, I mean, most of collect collectors are, you know, uh, men, okay? To a certain extent, their wives are also interested. So, basically, the excess of money and, um, you know, all the artworks that they collected will, like, be installed or di digantung di rumah and all that, right? Because the, so the wife has also say in the kind of uh, works that they, they the, the family collected. But um, I've never seen. Yeah, I agree with you that um, you know, collect a collector at least who only invests or, or looking at women artists. Yeah, I mean at least to my limited knowledge in the context of collecting in Malaysia. Yeah, uh, Palmaizun is a art tonager, uh, art collector, art advocate. Uh, she has a gallery in KL. I think you can visit the gallery. Yeah. Uh, so if there's okay, nothing, thank you, in, thank so you so much. I I hope. Uh, I wouldn't say that this would be uh, the definite definite survey of human artists in Southeast Asia. There are, um, of course, in the time limitation and all that. And I also would like to acknowledge uh, works of my colleagues like Yvonne Lo and uh, Wulan, who actually focuses on women artists in uh, in, the in the studies that they are in the country that they studies that they study. Like y Yvonne, she studied um, you know on Singaporean artists. Uh, you know Wulan studied Indonesian artists. Um, of course, I know some works by um, uh, a certain. Uh, this is written by, uh, I, I forgot her name, but women artist in Malaysia, but that's mostly based on paintings, okay? But of course, the, contextual, the contextualization are on women, not feminist, okay? Uh, so of course, we can also investigate why the stronghold of feminist art are not so much within the context of Southeast Asia, okay? Um, that's something that, you know, I'm most welcome if anybody wants to do a PhD on that topic. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's no deep investigation in that context uh, yet, at least. So those who are interested, <laughs> thank you so much. Okay. Uh, this mic is not so artistic. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, well, there are two things. I, I actually, I met uh, Dr. Sarina when I was in USM over coffee at this Anjung. <laughs> so uh, there are two things which uh, you know, generally that we can we can uh, learn from this lecture. One is the representation of women in art, uh, uh, like Hossein Enas and Amos Solo, I think. Uh, how women are presented in, in, in the Southeast Asian context. The other is the presentation of women artists uh, in, the, uh, in Southeast Asia. Uh, and you, you focus on several. I, I mean, I, I, many of them are not familiar to me except for a few. Hussein Enas and Paris and uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> the only one. 
Yeah, so uh, thank you again. Uh, a big round of applause to Dr. Sarina and uh, thank you for coming here and uh, participating in our art, uh, ISTEC art uh, uh, lectures. Uh, this is the second one and uh, subsequently going to have uh, uh, many more uh, uh, next year. Thank you again. Um, after this, we're going to have some refreshments at the uh, cafeteria downstairs. I think uh, you, uh, you, you have to wait. I'll lead you to the way. Yeah, thank you.